heard you talked about the gold medal. You said ages is a number. Yes. You're almost 38, though. I mean, yes, man. Do you think this is your last chance? Uh, this is my last chance. And I've always said, you know what, I want to run as if this is my last chance. Um, I'm not going to think anything past 2012. So, first of all, one step at a time, I want to make this team. And when I make this team, I just want to run for the goal. There's nothing else. I'm not going to run for the second spot. But if it happens, let that happen. But I want to just say no second spot. I just want to run for the first spot. Because that is what I want. That would define me. Did I do the best? Yes. If I win it. And if I didn't get it, well, I tried. And I didn't get it. So, but before that, I just want to make sure I prepare myself very well and run for that first spot. Which, is, which I want. I really want it so bad. You've, in the past, you've been known for your versatility. You know, you can win from the front, back, fast, or slow. As you've gotten older, how have things changed? I mean, can you can you see that if you can't quite do everything you used to be able to do? Um, I think if it comes down to the 1500 meters, I cannot do what I used to do. I used to follow the pace up front, like I, I sometimes I feel like pushing the pacemaker, even though the pacemaker is going at the crazy pace, because I just feel comfortable. I feel like this is where I belong. This is my comfort zone. But then now, if I was to get into that kind of race, like I did at Prefontaine Classic, I ran all out at Prefontaine Classic. In fact, my body was shut after that. I'm like, I cannot believe I finished. I think 14. <laughs> That's the worst position. But I went 3.34, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, 3.54. But my body was all over completely. I just felt like, am I really in the race or not? And it's one of those things I cannot do now. But it's the opposite when it comes to 5,000. This is the race that I've been practicing. So 1,500 is gone. So, But I do that for, just to get me ready for the 5,000 meters. So that's something I cannot do anymore. So over the years, you know, 1,500 has changed. The strategy is different. Uh, compared to the 5,000. So I feel like I'm in my comfort zone now in the 5,000 meters. So say tomorrow, four laps remaining, you're all kind of together and Rupp takes off. What do you do? That's one mile. That's the start of a, a mile race. So I'm, an, I'm a miler. So my head, in fact, when I see four, that's a mile. So it doesn't matter what you do anymore. So if you want to leave me, you leave me eight laps to go. Because that's two miles. It's still far away from me. Because I'm starting to warm up. I'm still getting into the race. And that is where... I could feel like, wow, well, we still have eight to go. But when you leave five, which is 2K, or even, you know, 1,600 meters, four laps to go, that's all. Because it doesn't matter the pace you go. If you go 51 and then, you know, no, of course not 51. So if you go 58, if you go 58, I'm in there. It's not going to have so, any problems. So, so if somebody's going to break it, they're going to have to do it pretty early. You do pretty early. But you know what? That's what I, I was telling you. I've been training since November. And then in April, I just put that... Uh, scenario into my training. That's what I was telling you. I have to plan. Coach tells me, okay, remember in that workout what we did? If the race develops to be that way, you have to execute exactly and have to do what we did in that training that same day. And he tells me exact date and where we were. And so I feel like, okay, if that, the race happens to be like somebody tries to fire up, you know, seven laps to go, what I'm going to do is click it to that day and just run the way my coach wants me to do it.